Perfect. Okay. Well, my apologies, everyone. Um, like I said, it, it would not be a true 2020 Zoom meeting if we didn't have some kind of issue. And I'll go and pull up some video here uh, so you can see uh, my face. But yeah, welcome everyone. My name is Cody Rich. I am a solutions engineer here at Zaloni. Um, so our talk today is gonna be data ops, the secret advantage for ML and AI success. Now that's a little bit different than most of the um, other topics that we're hearing about, but um, you know, a lot of our other topics are the latest and greatest uh, algorithms or uh, uses for them, new models. And they're all amazing things that are, are truly gonna change the way our world works. Uh, but they all have one thing in common, and that's they have to access data. Now you might be saying, Cody, that's obvious. Uh, and it is, but um, data ops, as we're gonna get into, really focuses on how do we allow you, the data scientist, to get to your data as quickly as possible and quit wasting time trying to get access to it. So that's what we're gonna be discussing today. Um, as a quick housekeeping item before we jump into it, uh, we are gonna be using Slack for all of our questions, comments, concerns. Uh, I would love to keep this interactive. I know that it gets very dry. We're all fatigued uh, of being on Zoom for the last six, seven months. So any questions, comments, please send them to our Slack channel. You can just search wed slash Cody uh, and our channel will pop up. And uh, I'll try to keep it again, um, a little bit more uh, light as well. So I've snuck in a couple slides uh, outside of our, our standard marketing ones. You'll, you'll probably be able to figure out which ones are the ones I made. But uh, that being said, let's let's jump right into it. So I'll go ahead and close my video. And um, to start off with, I want to just give a quick background on Zaloni, who we are, what we do, and why you should even listen to what it is we have to say. So you may have never heard of Zaloni. We are a software startup based out of Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. So that's the Raleigh-Durham area. Uh, so we are East Coasters, um, but we are the creators of Arena, which is the end-to-end -end governed data ops platform that empowers enterprises to accelerate and improve their analytics. Um, so that's a great mission and all, but some of our proof points really lie in our customers. So LabCorp, TIA, PwC, Alexion, uh, that one may ring familiar as they're uh, one of the leaders right now in a COVID-19 vaccine. So we're all cheering them on. Uh, they're all just some of our customers along with uh, many others, including national and international banks. Uh, partners, partnered with all the major uh, cloud compute and storage providers that you would expect, uh, as well as some of the top system integrators, and then awards. So we think we're doing great work, uh, but we're not the only ones. We've been lucky enough to receive the CIO 100 and partner with Naveen, one of our customers, the CRN Big Data 100. Howard Dresner just rated us number two in industry pipelines. So uh, we're doing pretty well, uh, and we're very excited about that. But uh, with that in mind, uh, enough about who we are, let's get into today's problem. So uh, starting with data ops, right? Uh, we're talking about data ops, but I like to first start with the definition because I know uh, a lot of times buzzwords can take on a lot of different meanings. So if you Google data ops, what you'll find as the definition is the automated process-oriented methodology used by analytic and data teams to improve quality and reduce the cycle time of data analytics. So that's the, that's the official definition. Uh, I think it's a little, little dry. So if we were to shorten it up uh, or make it a little simpler, uh, automated, certainly we're thinking technology, you know, AI, ML, all the other buzzwords of this conference that very much ring true. Um, process oriented data teams. Again, we're thinking people, process, uh, and then the back half is really improvement, right? Better quality, faster times, all of these things. So to sum it up, data ops is really, how do we take technology, people, process, and put those together to make things quicker, better, faster for data analytics? And that's that's really what we wanna dive into today because that is you know, the secret sauce. <clears throat> so um, if we know what data ops is, uh, what's it look like today? Well, 
I like to take from an executive point of view, what do, what do we see uh, most people thinking about kind of the data ops and, and movement? Well, a lot of executives think, you know, data science is, is a four-step process, right? Number one, hoard as much data as you can. And we have, you know, a lot of new data sources and streams of data. Uh, number two, we hire the best and brightest data scientists. So that's you guys. Uh, all these, um, everyone here at ODSC, you know, the great data scientists, data analysts. Uh, step number three, we don't really know. It's kind of magic. Uh, and truthfully, that's that magic is what this conference is getting into. And then step four, uh, the end of the day, we all want to get rich and, and make money off of that, produce value of some kind. So uh, obviously, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but step three is much more convoluted and complicated than just magic, right? That magic is a lot of work. And really, it's broken up into two parts. Uh, the second part, or the first part, is what I am calling data ops, right? That encompassing, all encompassing of how do I get data, do all of these different things. And then the second part is how do I actually turn that data into something meaningful so I can get rich? Um, a lot of the talks, or, or most of the other talks, will, will focus on the second half, but we're going to focus on this front half because we know that for the data scientist, the data analyst, Getting data is not easy. Uh, you know, first you got to search across multiple places. You got to contact the right people. Uh, nope, that's not the right data set. Start over. Okay, now we have the data. We got to talk to IT. Uh, finally, get access. Now we need to prep it. Bring in additional data sets. Perform analytics. Oh, that's all wrong again. Let's start over. It's a mess. And again, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, so you certainly understand how difficult this process can be. Um, and so why is it that way? Why is this such a hard process to get data and, you know, allow a data scientist to do data science? Well, what we see is really complexity is oftentimes the barrier to progress. And so what do I mean by that? Well, at the bottom, we have all these great options for cloud vendors, storage options, et cetera. At the top, again, we have great data scientists, um, you know, great tools, whether it's a Databricks notebook, Tableau, Power BI, Jupyter, uh, you name it. There's great tools, but the problem is that that gap, right? <clears throat> How do we connect those and let people get all the different storage for or all the different formats, access to different locations, uh, legacy data lakes? Oftentimes our customers, they're not implementing their first data lake, they're implementing their fourth data lake. So uh, for IT, they're just having to strap all these things together. I mean, we have 10 different legacy systems we have to keep up. We're adding new streaming data. We're purchasing data. So trying to make all those things accessible. And then on top of that, control them and ensure that we don't end up on CNN for a being the next data breach. Uh, it becomes a, a ticky tack kind of jumbled mess of things stuck together. And I think this XKCD comic really sums it up, right? Uh, check it out. I made a fully automated data pipeline that collects and processes all the info we need. Well, it's just a giant house of cards built with random scripts that's going to completely collapse the moment any input is weird. It might not. Oh, whoops. Yeah, it just collapsed. Hang on. I can patch it. And I think that uh, for IT who's on the line, y'all understand this is uh, scarily close to the truth. So how do we resolve that? Well, our approach at Zaloni is arena so arena as we talked about is our unified data ops platform and the way we see kind of bridging that crevasse is to build out a unified platform instead of trying to glue together a bunch of point solutions so uh, we've seen that data ops to work correctly really needs to encompass three different things three pillars per se step one catalog we want to catalog all data wherever it's at whatever the format whatever the location doesn't matter, and it doesn't have to be in a single place, but I want to be able to find it all from one search bar. Step two, if we have a giant catalog, uh, your CISO right now is probably freaking out thinking, great, now they can take all of our data in one fail swoop. And it's a good point, right? So if we have all of that uh, data, we need to make sure it's controlled and controlled both in a security perspective, you know, only proper access, obfuscate or hide sensitive data, and then from a quality perspective, we all know garbage in, garbage out. So how do we make sure that catalog isn't just a bunch of garbage, 
but it's good, clean quality data. And then finally, consume. So consumption is really the end point that I think most people miss. So as a data scientist, we've probably likely heard the, um, the often quoted statistic of 70 to 80% of my time is spent on data ops and DevOps, and that's likely true. And so how do we make it so you find your data quickly and then you don't have to go create a support ticket and email someone and follow up and do all these things to actually get access because that's where you're spending probably way more time uh, than you should and certainly more time than you want to. So once we've done all that, right, once we've really built that bridge, we see that data ops becomes less of this linear pipe and really becomes a cycle. So as a data scientist, if I built out a model, well, I likely want to put my data that I've, you know, transformed and changed back into the catalog so someone else can use it. But I don't want to stop there. I want to put my model, my report, my code that I uh, built in my notebook. I want to put all that back in the catalog. And we see this for really mature data ops groups. It, it becomes very cyclical, uh, but it really increases the, the speed and velocity at which uh, data science can grow for an organization. And ultimately, it takes us all back to where we started of. That's how we enable these next level ML, ML, excuse me, and AI initiatives. To power the models and initiatives of tomorrow, uh, we need to make sure we're starting out with good trusted data. We, of course, like we said, no one wants to be on the news uh, for a data leak. So we wanna make sure we have good security and traceability. And then finally, we wanna empower the data scientists, not hold them back. So give them that long promised self-service data marketplace so they can go out and do data science. So that's really what it looks like for data ops and how we help uh, improve that. Now with that, I want to jump into a quick demo to show you uh, really what that looks like. Uh, and so I know we've talked about it, but at the end of the day, what does that actually look like? So I'm logged into Arena, our platform, as a data scientist named Ben. And I've been tasked with doing a, a couple different things. The first thing I uh, am really tasked with is finding the data sets I need. And then two, I want to put them in a notebook um, or a storage layer and use a notebook so that I can go and do some research. And I'm working for a healthcare organization. So uh, to make it relevant, maybe I'm looking for details on COVID-19 patients. So I wanna understand the different comorbidities and um, medications, uh, everything that's kind of interacting. So uh, logged in, you can very much see catalog control consume. Um, we built that into our platform and I can go and directly look at my catalog, but I can also use my global search bar and search for everything that's relevant to my data sets. So when I search for patients, for example, I see uh, I have several different tables. Uh, I have some workflows. If I had models or reports, they would certainly show up here as well. And so I can quickly find the details that I need. And I can sort down as well. So um, maybe I just need data and I want to look by a specific zone, for instance. And I'll, in this case, I'll start in the raw zone. Now I can open up my catalog entry and immediately I'm presented with just different information that's going to help me as a data scientist digest and consume uh, what it is that I'm looking at. So we have business information that my data stewards and SMEs have filled in. I have technical information automatically captured. And so uh, just like that, I can immediately start better understanding the context of what it is I'm looking at. Now, we have a couple different tabs here as well that are going to give me some ideas. So um, I could click in and see further descriptions on different fields or profile them. Uh, I can see what kind of privacy or data quality rules have been applied. So in this case, my social security numbers have been masked. Um, and again, it's going to help me as we said, quickly understand. Uh, we also might want to look and see how fresh is our data? You know, how often is it coming in? So I can look at my ingestion history. Uh, my data quality, we talked about data quality rules being applied, but I want to see how did everything pan out? You know, is this good clean data or should I look somewhere else? And we can see that in this case, uh, with our raw data at least, uh, a lot of our rules passed, but our zip code validation 
Well, in that case, it looks like we had quite a few fake zip codes. And if that's relevant to my report, that's certainly something I wanna know. So in this case, I'm gonna take a look at my lineage and I'm gonna go a little bit farther downstream after my data quality has been applied. So you can see I have my patients, we've applied some data quality and we automatically captured uh, that lineage. And in this case, we broke the data up into good data and bad data. So as a data scientist, I'm just gonna focus on the good stuff. My data stewards, they can go and resolve whatever issues are going on with the bad data because we've split that for them automatically. Now, if I keep going down, I can see we did some tokenization and privacy. And so this is actually probably where I should be starting with both good and secure data. So I don't have to worry about PHI. So if I open up this, this entity, again, we get that same uh, view and concept and I could go through these same options. But in this case, let me just quickly preview the data, make sure everything looks good. I have some social security numbers. Um, I have my addresses, all of these things have been uh, tokenized. So again, I don't have to worry about PHI. And in this case, uh, I think this is the patient's data set that I need. So um, taking us to that third part of consumption, rather than having to ask IT or submit a ticket, I can simply do a shopping cart-like process. So I'll go ahead and add this to my cart. I can see that I can subfilter that down. In this case, I don't know what patients I need, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of them. And just like that, my shopping cart is updated. Now I can go and add all of the other data sets I need. Uh, in this case, I know that all of my catalog entries are within this project. So maybe I want my immunizations. I'll go ahead and add that. Maybe I want my medications. I'll go ahead and add that. And then maybe I want my encounters. And so with my encounters, again, we only care for uh, those that are relevant to our COVID-19. So maybe I'll say, I only want it where the reason they came in is COVID-19. And I'll set, I don't want to set any kind of artificial limit there either. So once I've done that, um, we can see I now have four entries in my catalog. All right, great. So now that I have all those, uh, you can see in this case, they all came from my EHR, but typically uh, it doesn't matter for me where they came from. If they're sitting in the EDW or ODS or uh, S3 or Cloudera, or maybe one in each, shouldn't matter to me because I wanna use it where I need it. So I'm gonna just simply check out or provision. And we have a very highly configurable um, provisioning wizard that we can use here. And so I have a lot of different tools here to give you some examples, but it's worth noting that none of these have to be used. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of idea of the art of the possible. So I'll fill out some details like why I'm doing it. Um, again, provide some feedback. Uh, as a data scientist, I don't wanna spend my time doing DevOps. So I'm gonna automatically spin up an EC2 instance, and I'm gonna have that come preloaded with the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, Arena is going to do that for me automatically. And then because we are dealing with sensitive information, uh, we set a data lease. So uh, the data owner said, hey, you can only have this for a certain period of time. And after that, let's automatically remove your sandbox environment and automatically spin down your VM. So I've selected those. I can choose where I land my data. I have a lot of different options. But as I said before, I'm a Snowflake user. So I'll choose Snowflake and we're gonna automatically spin up a warehouse and land it there. All right, finally, I have my summary page showing me here's what I'm doing, here's where my data is going. Um, and then in this case, I'll say, email me when it's all done. So if I click submit, we would automatically generate a new Snowflake warehouse, land that data, spin up my Jupyter notebook. And now as a data scientist, I can go build that value that I wanna do. So. Uh, that's just a very quick look at what it looks like um, to use Arena and how we help deliver uh, to data science in a quicker, uh, more efficient way through data ops. So with that, uh, we have a couple minutes left for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them in the Slack or any comments. Uh, we'd love to address them. I don't, I don't see any questions right away. So should we wait for a couple of minutes till? Yeah, absolutely. 
Awesome. Okay. So we'll give a couple minutes. Um, that being said as well, for anyone, um, if you come up with a question or thought later, uh, we'll be on Slack. You can uh, either Slack us in this Slack channel, Slack me directly, or of course you can feel free to stop by the Zaloni booth um, in the uh, event area. All right, looks like we have a couple people typing. <laughs> the, the suspense is killing me to, to see yeah, people. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think we can end up. Oh, there it comes. Yeah. All right. So we have a uh, question here coming up saying, um, how much time could we spend by spinning up a snowflake warehouse in our automated manner compared to doing manually? So that's a great question. Um, I would say it's a little bit difficult to answer that directly. Uh, and I'll, I'll give more details as to why. So Snowflake, uh, again, one of our partners, they have a great tool and you can spin up Snowflake warehouses very quickly. Uh, so in terms of the actual ability to spin it up, uh, that's already something that's very quick. The benefit of Arena landing data in the Snowflake warehouse uh, really comes into play with the policies and procedures aspect. So by ensuring that your data is spun up in a uh, approved environment, it's done, again, programmatically uh, through a process, that's where we see uh, a huge amount of time saved from our customers. So just as a quick example, uh, one of our customers, it was previously taking them months to deliver on uh, analytics. Uh, I wanna say it's somewhere between four to six months from time of ask to time of delivery. And after implementing Arena, they were able to cut that down to a matter of days. So. Uh, whenever some uh, executive said, hey, I want to report on this, they normally had to wait to the second half of the year to find out. Now they could find out by the end of the week. So um, that I know is a little bit broader than the question around Snowflake itself, but I, I hope that gives you a little bit of um, information there. Great question, though. Any, any other questions before we finish up? I know we're coming up on time. <laughs> 